my lovely, lovely imps. Today, we're going to be watching something together that is very special. And also, very intriguing. And also a little disappointing. There has been a lot of talk in recent months about AI. There has been a lot of controversy about AI. But one way that doesn't get talked about all that much is the way that AI, aka various learning um, algorithms, um, have been incorporated into other parts of our lives. There's a lot of talk, and I'm guilty of this as well, uh, focusing on AI art, on chat GPT. Like, for example, that uh, more and more colleges are reporting uh, that enormous percentages of their papers uh, being submitted by students are very clearly and obviously made by ChatGPT. Uh, the fact that numerous scientific organizations have reported uh, uh, more and more uh, papers, scientific papers, being published using ChatGPT, some of which are even making it through and into publications without people catching it. Um, a lot of focus has been on ChatGPT and on the art side of things. And I think there's a good reason to focus on that. However, today we're going to be talking and reacting to a video uh, that focuses on a different aspect of the AI learning algorithm side of things, which is search engines and social media. You see, Google and now, more recently, within the last two years or so, YouTube has begun using quote-unquote AI as a part of their uh, search algorithms. So how you find content on YouTube and how you find websites on Google is now being driven and heavily impacted by AI algorithms. And a lot of these are very, very difficult to actually discern what they're actually doing. Um, and some of it, as it turns out, is not good. Not good at all. One of the recurring problems with AI of all types, both the art and the search types, is that uh, AI ten has a tendency to bake in biases, uh, sometimes very obviously, sometimes in more sinister and difficult to detect ways, uh, from those that create it and the data sets that they feed to it, which is one of the things that's going to be touched on in the video that we are about to react to. You see, a really, really amazing, very successful, and totally, in my opinion, deserving YouTube channel by the name of How to Cook That, featuring Anne Reardon, um, has made a video exposing YouTube's bias. And this bias is actually pretty bad. And we're going to watch this video together, and we're going to talk about it afterwards. And I'm going to have some things to add in along the way here. But uh, Anne Reardon of How to Cook That uh, is very thorough with the sort of approach that she has to social media and to YouTube. And she reached out to YouTube with some questions, which we're going to see explored in this video. And I wanted to share this with everyone because I watched this video and on my own time and I found it very compelling. And additionally, I have been on YouTube as a platform for about four and a half years now. And it's been a wild ride. And it's come with a lot of challenges, um, a lot of struggles. And in my time on this website, it seemed harder and harder uh, uh, to, to accomplish certain things that, that seem fairly necessary to make a living on this website. And additionally, it seems to be harder and harder to make a living on this website. And I have a feeling that some of what's to talked about in this video is... Uh, ties into that. Additionally, I talk about YouTube generally, and I think that issues of bias on YouTube are fairly important. Anyway, without any further ado, I would like us to watch and react to How to Cook That's Video, Exposing YouTube's Bias. If you guys have never watched, by the way, if you've never watched How to Cook That's Channel, 
Uh, Anne Reardon's channel is amazing. Uh, Anne Reardon talks about a whole lot of different things, a lot of cooking stuff, which, as you know, I'm a big fan of. We have a, a little sub show here called Cooking Mama, um, which we don't usually we don't usually make we don't usually uh, react to such beautiful things as the the stuff that Anne Reardon makes, but uh, we have fun anyway. Anyway, check out uh, how to cook that other videos, uh, which we'll talk about further. But let's let's react to this right away. All right, let's do this. Let's get into this. I have some big. Big questions for YouTube that they won't answer and that of course made me suspicious so I have spent the whole two weeks digging and researching and just trying to uncover the truth for you so let's get into it question number one is shorts killing long-form content on the platform shorts the vertical videos that are less than 60 seconds long were introduced by YouTube back in 2020 prior to that you could upload a short in length video to the platform but no one was going to see it because it would have low watch time so the algorithm just didn't recommend it nowadays though if I go onto YouTube and for example search for cake notice here I'm on the all tab not the shorts tab and I've got an ad followed by a row of shorts and after that we have a short another ad a short and a row of shorts and another ad followed by more shorts this that what which what Anne is talking about here with the the way over pushing shorts is so frustrating it makes finding videos organically through the search really really difficult um and i i don't even dislike shorts i don't i, I think that shorts can be a lot of fun i've published shorts on this channel uh some of them have done fairly well but it's so much the shorts are getting pushed so hard that it's crowding out other stuff and it makes it hard to find when you want to sit down and watch a 20 minute video or something about a topic that you're interested in and all you can find is shorts often shorts that are questionably even related to what you're searching for it's pretty bad it's gotten a little bit out of hand but this is just the beginning Surely that has to have an impact on the long form video views. You've been moving really fast in another area, specifically shorts. It's definitely an area we've been investing very heavily in, for sure. YouTube has put out plenty of data boasting about the growth of YouTube shorts on their platform. But when I asked them if they could give me data about the number of long form video views per year since shorts was introduced, they said, we're not able to share any historical data on a platform level on the number of long form versus shorts views per year. And that's okay. It's their platform. They don't have to be transparent with creators who rely on this for their income if they don't want to. I did find an article in the Financial Times though where it said that a senior staff member at YouTube had expressed concern that shorts were cannibalizing long-term views and that fewer long-form videos were being uploaded to the platform and there was a risk of long-form dying out. So I think that answers that question. But why does it even matter if it's shorts or long form? Well, it matters to creators and to viewers because quality content takes time and money to create. And shorts is just not paying enough. Zach King. It's actually shocking how little money you actually get from shorts. Um, truly shocking. Um, I, 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 I think that we've published, I, w I wonder, I wonder, can we find out? Let's see, we could probably find this out. Here, I'll look it up while we watch, real quick. Let's continue, let's hear what, what she has to say and I'll look up mine. Got 35 million views on shorts and earned only $343. My 35 million, oh, sorry, I need to put this, sorry, let's, I, I didn't mean to do that, I apologize. Let's go back real quick. Let's just listen to that again real quick. Sorry about that, a rookie mistake. Quality content takes time and money. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. <clears throat> Let's look at the lifetime. On every short that I've ever uploaded on my channel, okay? We have dozens of shorts on my channel. I have made less than $15 across every single short that I have ever made on my entire channel. Less than $15.
and most of that, or a good chunk of that came from YouTube premium viewers. Last month I made, how much? Last month I made $2.25. Incredible. In total, that's in total, yes. That is, the grand total is less than $15 on the dozens of shorts I've uploaded. To create, and Shorts is just not paying enough. Zach King got 35 million views on Shorts and earned only $343. My $343 for 35 million views. Just wow. Just, just wow. The next question is related to shorts. It's what even counts as a view on YouTube shorts? I mean, historically, YouTube has always said that for it to count as a view on the platform, you have to watch for at least 30 seconds of the video and the viewer has to initiate the view by clicking on it. You can't just auto play the video. Obviously, that's not the case with shorts. So I asked the question, what does count as a view? And this was the reply. We don't have a defined duration for the system to count it as a shorts view, but it does gauge the number of legitimate views for shorts versus those who swiped away immediately. How can you be counting something that's undefined? That is a really weird answer. That's a sus answer. So then I started looking at Shorts Analytics and you can see that it has the percent who chose to view versus those that swiped away. So we know it's not like TikTok, just swiping past doesn't count as you've seen the video. But if we look at the analytics on this 14 second video, you can see here that on this beginning bit, the first five seconds, the view is above the 100% line. And that's because once you've seen the video, it loops, it starts playing again. So if you watch it to the end and start watching it again, before you get a chance to swipe away, it looks like you are watching more than once. So depending where you choose to put your view count at is dramatically going to change the number of views on the platform. If we look at this longer video, it's exactly the same. You can see those first five seconds have a greater than 100% view count. So if you chose to put your view time at two seconds as the defined duration of a short view, you're gonna have many, many more views on the platform than if you said it was 10 seconds that counted as a view on a short. So by not defining it, you can manipulate the number of views on shorts that you're getting on the platform. The negative of that is by making it all the way at the beginning, like one second or half a second, is you're gonna increase the number of views, so the boasting rights on it, but you're not gonna increase the CPM. The next question I have is a really curious one. This is one that someone back at YouTube- Mistress Lynn says, this is really well edited and I love the visuals. If you like this, you should watch basically the rest of Anne Reardon's entire channel, How to Cook That. Um, her whole production style is amazing. Her videos are incredibly informative and entertaining. Um, the visual style is super, super unique. Um, I. I watch so much How to Cook That. I, I love her channel so much. Uh, yeah, her debunking videos are amazing. If you want to like, that's the videos that got me into her channel was the debunking videos where she goes and she takes a cooking video or a hack, life hack video or whatever and debunks it and does it herself. And they're amazing. Um, it's so, so cool. I, I love Ann Reardon's channel. Anyway, let's continue in Sydney when I used to live there raised with me years ago because of all of the channels that they were managing all the female hosted ones had been growing nicely before the change to the AI algorithm and then by a year after here that let me just rewind real quick so we can we can hear this I was answering a question I didn't mean to, to cross over but listen to this real quick next question I have is a really curious one this is one that someone back at YouTube in Sydney when I used to live there raised with me years ago because of all of the channels that they were managing all the female hosted ones had been growing nicely nicely before the change to the AI algorithm. And then by a year after, they were all 
declining rather rapidly. Certainly in the how-to space, I noticed a sudden influx of male-hosted channels doing really well, and same in the beauty space, which those areas both used to be dominated by female hosts and female creators. But at the same time, there was a big influx in the amount of content that was being promoted for content farms, which as you know, can contain a lot of misinformation and fake recipes, which is why we've been doing all the debunking on. So I totally forgot about the potential for a gender bias. I just didn't even think about it anymore until recently. And then I was watching a video by Amanda reviewing a conference for YouTube creators that I was considering going to. And this is what she said. This was a dude fest. <laughs> One, maybe two women were on the main stage throughout uh, the three days, the two days. You had a lot of uh, volunteers that were women creators. I spoke to a bunch of them, they were great. Now, if you're running an event, you have to put the biggest creators on the main stage because they're who people want to see and you need more seats in the auditorium. It just makes sense. You don't want an empty auditorium with someone smaller on the stage. So that means either they couldn't get any female creators who were big to come and speak at their conference or there aren't any female creators who are big. And that made me wonder. And then I heard Samia say this. Our industry is very predominantly male, specifically on YouTube. It, it, you mm -hmm. go to any creator event, uh, you know, and it feels like it's it's uh, more male centric than uh, than maybe ever right now on YouTube. Why do you think that is, and do you think it's hard for female creators to break through on YouTube right now? It's a great question. Yeah, <laughs> great question. <laughs> I'm not quite sure, and it's been something I've also been thinking about. Is is it the nature of the algorithm that rewards more intense? content mm. that uh, and and maybe I fall in that because I'm doing traditionally more masculine things sometimes. I, I'm not sure. Some of you might remember back in 2018, Amazon was in the news for its AI recruiting software. Amazon software engineers recently uncovered a big problem. The company has now abandoned an AI recruiting tool after discovering that the program was biased against women. When it came to choosing an applicant for a technical job like a software engineer, it was filtering out anyone who had the word women's in their application if they went to a women's university or were president of the women's chess club or played in the women's hockey team. If any of that was on the resume, they were getting lower points. And even when they tried to tell it, do not filter based on the word women's, we are happy to have women in those roles, it was still filtering out the women. It started looking at the tone of the language used in the application. The men's ones tended to use words like execute and more aggressive tones, I guess, and the women's were more passive tones. So it still managed to filter them out somehow. So they ended up scrapping it, going, well, this is not gonna work for us because we do want to employ women. The trouble is AI is always trained on a data set. So if there's any bias in that data set, it tends to pick that up and exaggerate it. So because it was trained on 10 years of historical hiring data and over that time, predominantly men had been hired for those roles, it had learnt that men must be better at those roles. Bloomberg did something similar where they asked an AI image generator to generate images of people in different jobs. So they asked for a picture of a CEO, a politician, a cleaner, a doctor, and in all the higher up roles, it gave a lot more men than it did women. And you might go, well, that's just true. It's just showing a reflection of what there is in society because there is a bias there still in some of the top roles. But the thing is, it has exaggerated the bias. For example, if we ask for an image of a doctor, it gave nine out of 10 images of a male doctor. Whereas in the US, 37% of doctors are women. So the bias already existed, but the AI has made it even worse. So to know if- That's pretty grim, isn't it? That's pretty grim. And of course, you can apply this exact same, these exact same findings to all kinds of other identity groups. You can talk about the same issue with race. You can talk, talk about the same issue with uh, sexuality, with with um, queer, with whether you're queer or not. It's uh, pretty shocking. There is a bias in the YouTube AI towards male creators. We're going to need to analyze a lot of data and it is 
hard to access this sort of thing. I'm not interested in shorts views because they don't pay very well. So we're just looking at long form views. We can't look at total views for all time because that's giving us historical data for channels that have been around for a long time like mine that were around before shorts. So we just want to know how many long form views channels got in the last 30 days and which ones are at the top. That took hours and days and weeks of analyzing data and thanks to James my son for helping me with that and doing all-nighters and just crunching numbers but I think we finally have the list of the most viewed channels in the last 30 days. Before we look at the results I want to highlight another way in which algorithms can affect our lives as well as deciding which YouTube channels to amplify they also affect how we read the news. Algorithms will look at your browsing history in order to decide what information to show you which can really narrow down your perspective. There's an old saying that says in a court case the first person that gets up to speak always seems right until they're cross-examined. In other words, you need to hear both sides of a story to get the full picture. Today's sponsor, Grand News, is on a mission to help us do just Damn, that. A slick sponsor. Slick sponsor. I will say something. Ground News has been... Ground News has been... They've been, they've been out there, okay? I don't know anything about Ground News except for that I've seen a million of their sponsorships. My goodness, they've been nailing these sponsorships. What the hell? I've, I've always taken some of their claims to be a little sus. Like any time any company claims to be able to have like a, a, the right left analysis, I want to know like, well, how do you how do you calculate that? Because a lot of them will put will say stuff like, oh, yeah, CNN is left. And it's like. Well, actually, usually CNN is center, but they'll say, like, MSNBC is left. And I'm like, look, I'm left, okay? I'm openly left. That's my political position. I'm very open about that, okay? Anybody who knows my show knows that I very openly consider myself, you know, pretty far on the left side of things. I don't think MSNBC is representative of any left person that I know, so... They do conflate left with liberal, but that's just an example. I'm always interested in the actual nitty gritty of how these things work. But anyway, uh, not to not to do a, a sponsor skip, but I'm not sponsored by Ground News, and I can't endorse them. So we're gonna get back to the heart of the uh, we're gonna we're gonna get back to the heart of the topic. Let's continue. Wants to see if the YouTube AI algorithm is to all their features. It's a great way to outsmart the algorithms and make sure that you're seeing the bigger picture. Now, back to our results to see if the YouTube AI algorithm is favoring male creators or not. Imagine that this is the top 100 channels with the most long form video views in the last 30 days. These ones are the music channels like Taylor Swift. These ones are the made for kids channels. Kids watch a lot of content on YouTube. If you didn't know, kids creators are supposed to mark their videos as Brendan Hussar with the tier one sub, thank you very, very much, says, I started watching How to Cook That on your recommendation a few months back, and I really enjoy her content. That makes me feel good. I love being able to tune people in to other shows uh, that I enjoy and that I think are good. So it makes me very happy that you have enjoyed How to Cook That stuff. It's why I do, you know, reacts like this, where I let people know who we're who we're watching. I like to create that ba that back and forth flow. That conversation is really important to me. Thank you. Made for kids, just like Bounce Patrol has a great Australian kids channel. If you scroll down, you can see there are no comments because comments automatically get switched off on made for kids videos. The other unfortunate thing is your AdSense goes down by about tenfold. And that's because- Yeah, if you, if you do made for kids, made for kids just the reason, it cre it's the whole made for kids thing was like, an almost necessary thing you know what i mean like the before before the made for kids category existed there were all of these channels that were clearly making stuff for kids and they had like the most disturbing and messed up comment sections um and i don't know youtube's solution was not perfect but i the, something had to be done because the state of like kids channels that weren't officially kids channels before was really messed up. 
Some of you may have seen uh, way back in the day the videos that H3H3 did on the like Elsa Spider-Man kids channels where it was co nonsense content slop that sometimes had like really weird sexual themes for some reason in these videos that were very clearly designed for like children to be viewed and they also in the h3h3 video they also talked about how predatory a lot of the comment sections were on videos that were clearly being pitched at children um it's bad it was bad now unfortunately the solution to the kids videos thing has basically been to make um to to make like kids content not barely monetizable at all um, and the reason for that, of course, is because you, a lot of places there are restrictions against selling advertisements to kids, which is, yeah, that makes sense. It's completely logical to, to, to like, hey, you shouldn't be selling all kinds of random products to children. But because there are very few um, like fully supported or uh, reliable, you know, ways to make money on YouTube and a lot of YouTube is just like sort of parents just dumping videos in front of their kids. Um, it, it means that these channels are incentivized to do what we're about to see, which you'll see in just a second. Because it's actually illegal to serve targeted ads to children. The reason being is because to serve targeted ads to you, they have to track you across the internet to see what your interests are and what things you are wanting to buy so they can serve those ads to you. And it's illegal to track data on children. YouTube got fined $136 million for doing so by the FTC. So they had to implement a way that creators could say this channel is made for kids and there will be no targeted ads on that. Anyway. Back to the top 100. These ones are TV shows or very large media companies. And this may come as a surprise to you, but all of these channels are not in English, which makes sense given that India is the largest consumer of YouTube. So that leaves us with only five. I didn't know that before this video. I didn't know that, that um, India was the number one YouTube uh, consumer. Pretty interesting. I've created channels out of the top 100. So we had to go even further down the list to get to the top 10 for the month. Coming also, that really speaks to the direction that YouTube has gone over the last decade. The fact that, um, you know, a lot of people used to herald YouTube as this kind of like the democratization of viewing, you know, where it's like, oh yeah, you know, anybody can make a YouTube channel and you know, it's it's anybody can put their video up there, but like the top 100 channels are mostly music videos from very well established musicians, television shows from establishment um, studios um, and, you know, and then I mean, there's the kid stuff, I suppose, though a lot of those are made by huge studios as well. It's kind of just like. Yeah, actually, this website has increasingly become exactly what its predecessor was. It's wild. So I'm not saying it's not possible. Obviously, I make my show out of a studio in my house. You know what I mean? And I've had success. There's like almost there's, there's 340 people watching right now, which is amazing. Thanks for watching please make sure that you press subscribe down below so you can see all my amazing stuff that I make. And, you know, not everything is all politics. I do all kinds of other cool stuff. But um, it's really cool. But my story is not common. I am in a very low percentage of people who can do that. Um, it is less and less common. And also, we, like, channels like mine increasingly can never make it past a certain point. We're forever trapped at a certain size, no matter how good we get, you know, or, or how, uh, you know, innovative or whatever we're doing, um, because the top 100 channels are going to be dominated by the, the giant mega corporations that are putting out their shows on this channel, on this website now, too. Anyway, let's continue. 
Checking in at number 10 with 157 million views for the month is Lanky Box. It looks very kid orientated for me, just so you know, kid is defined as under 13 on YouTube. Do you guys have any idea where the treasure is? <laughs> oh, they're right, it's right there. Oh, behind us, oh, you guys are right. But the comments seem to be on for all of the videos. Yep, and that's exactly what I was referring to before when I was talking about kids channels. There is a huge incentive right now for kids channels to pretend to not be kids channels. Basically doing exactly what the problem was before YouTube introduced kids channels. And it's very funny because some kids channels will intentionally put stuff in their episodes where they're like, they'll say like a swear or make a joke or whatever so that they can plausibly say we're not a kids channel, which just goes to show that like YouTube has not fixed the problem. So it has not been marked as made for kids, so we will put them on the list. At number nine, we have A for Adley. Adley is a child, so I have no idea how this is not marked as made for kids. The comments are on for this video, but this one is marked as made for kids. Looking through their latest videos, it seems to be 50-50 whether they've marked it as made for kids or not. So because half of them are marked as made for kids, I think we'll just put their channel in the made for kids section and take it off this list, which means we need to go back one further down to number 11, which will now be number 10, which is Penguin Z Zero. All right, let's ride, boys. Charlie! He does streaming and commentary. Yeah, baby! Woohoo! videos and got 154 million long form views in the last month. It's crazy. Add him to the list and at number eight. He's at the, yeah, Charlie's at the bottom of this list. Eight, we have Better Bojuk. This channel also has a kid as the main character, but comments seem to be on for every single video that I looked at, so it's not marked as made for kids, so we'll need to put it on the list. Next at number seven is MyZen. This one's run by a couple of guys. It was the top gaming channel in Japan and they now also dub it into English. It's mainly Minecraft and it looks kiddy to me again, but the comments are on, so we'll put them on the list. Next at number six is Darman Studios with 180 million views. The channel is run by Darman and he appears in the videos. I don't even like Darman anyway. What? Darman! I was just kidding. We don't have any females yet. Number five is Nile Red. It's great to have a science channel doing so well. It just seemed weird to me that something so toxic could smell good. This channel is run and hosted by <laughs> Nigel, so we'll add him to the list. The list is full, so we're going to have to shrink down the guys so that we have some more space there. This next channel at number four had 202 million long form views last month. The channel has animations created by Alexei Gerasimov and his latest war series, Skibbity Toilet, has really taken off. Let's put him on the list. Well, actually, he doesn't actually appear in his videos, so let's put one of his toilet characters on the list for him <laughs> instead. Now, next at number three, we have Afmau with 257 million views. Again, it's Minecraft and looks kitty to me. We're gonna play a game. But the comments are on. One thing for parents to be aware of is that some kitty looking channels have added more adult conversations or adult themes to some of their videos in order not to be marked as made for kids. And that seems to be the case with some of the content on this channel. She says on Tumblr that not all of her videos are suitable for kids kids to view. So just be aware of listening to what your kids are watching, not just them with headphones and you can only see it because it's... Uh, Violet says, she's saying anything that, that's animated looks kitty. I just noticed that, which is so wrong. I don't, I don't think that's what's going on here. I, I, based on what was, what's been shown of these channels, they seem pretty kitty. Like, uh, a Minecraft video with a bunch of like cartoon voices going, let's go on an adventure. What's that behind me? It's the number three. One, two, three. That seems, I don't know. That seems pretty kitty. I, I think I think so far Ann Reardon has been pretty fair. Uh, this channel maybe might be an exception to that, but I don't know. 
Jay Nolo says, Aff Mouse sells toys in the kids' section of Walmart. not necessarily going to be appropriate but we do finally have a female on the list so that is exciting next at number two we have jojo sim with 260 million views for the month is it a lie or is it the truth that a subway foot long is actually a foot long so another guy and at number one with 830 million long form views for the month is of course Mr. Beast. You have exactly 24 hours to build whatever you want to protect your Lamborghini from the bullets. The timer starts now. So if we add him to the top of the list, that makes it nine male creators to one female creator, or 2.3 billion video views compared to 257 million video views, which seems pretty biased. But if we shrink that down and add the next 20 channels on the list, we end up with 20 male creators, seven female creators, and three couples or family vlogs. So I put them in the middle because they've got both. So that seems a little fairer, still biased, but a little fairer. But that was until I looked at those seven female channels. Of those seven channels, six of them, the female doesn't actually appear in the videos at all. Three of them are gaming, so they appear only as an animated character. One does videos about other people and their dogs and they are not seen personally in the videos at all. One does ASMR slime, so they are not seen or heard in their videos. And another has a monkey, which surely this belongs in Made for Kids, but What's comments this? are on, so I put it on the list. So the question could be asked, does- There's actually, it's really funny, but there's actually an ad for YouTube Kids on this video down below but it's not in the YouTube Kids section. What's this? Comments are on, so I put it on the list. So the question could be asked, does AI even know that those channels are run by a female? Certainly historically before AI, YouTube always used to have a male at the top of the creator list. There was Smosh, then Fred, then Ryan Heger, followed by Ray William Johnson. Jenna Marbles was doing really well, but she never actually made it to the top spot before PewDiePie took over. And now, of course, there's Mr. Beast. The question is, has AI looked at that historical data and then exaggerated a bias towards male creators? I really don't know because there are millions of YouTube channels and we have only looked at the tip of the iceberg. Certainly what we can see doesn't look great. Let me know what you think in the comments. Out of interest, I asked Midjourney and AI image generator to generate me some pictures of YouTubers. With thanks to my amazing patrons for all of your support of this channel that allows us to keep going despite YouTube algorithms, make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday. As I said before, that video, I'm going to link to this video right here so that anybody who's watching this, you can just check it in the, uh, in the chat. Um, there you go. It'll also be in the description when we upload this as a segment. But that video was exposing YouTube's bias by the channel How to Cook That with Anne Reardon. Amazing channel. Go check it out. Um, yeah, a bit of a depressing video, right? A little, a little rough to hear about. Um, but unfortunately, a reality of the current paradigm online. Um, I can certainly say uh, it, 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 it does not feel encouraging, you know, as a woman creator in these spaces. Um, it does not feel encouraging to think about uh, how the overlap of queer and woman uh, will do to your numbers and your chances on this platform and your likelihood of success. Um, especially when you think about how it's getting harder and harder and harder to even make a, uh, a, a basic living on these websites. It's definitely very depressing on that front. But there's another angle to it as well. Um, if, if the general uh, concept of justice and fairness doesn't appeal to you for some reason. If it if it doesn't bother you that uh, you know 
there is no current hope of proportional representation on these sites, um, that uh, there's another side of it as well, which is just that you get less good stuff. Um, if, if, if women are not, if women look at this site and they go, yeah, women can't succeed easily on this site, they're going to get less success, they're going to work harder, and they're going to get less for it, um, they'll choose different careers which means you're missing out on talent. You're missing out on amazing things that could dazzle you and change your life, that could fill you with inspiration uh, for a very stupid reason, which is that an idiotic um, AI algorithm has simply decided that for some reason or another due to pre-existing bias that we should just bias it in a single direction. Um, yeah, and it does. It yeah, exactly. It creates a feedback loop. It creates a feedback loop of of uh, people going, why, why would I choose to, to pursue a career that I know that I'm not going to get even treatment in? Now, of course, we already know that many, many, many careers discriminate, uh, you know, against women, uh, both pay and in general respect, um, and in hiring. But uh, uh, it seems pretty goddamn bad on YouTube right now. That seems like a pretty major concern. I'm very happy that a large channel, 5 million subscribers, by the way, like How to Cook That, um, was willing to talk about this issue. But I don't think that's going to be enough uh, to, to make a meaningful dent on this. And I think that um, we uh, this, this example speaks to a pretty serious concern with the implementation, the sort of wanton um, uh, uh, implementation of AIs that have really baked in biases. Uh, this has really bad downstream effects. It's terrible. Um, you know, I I do this site. I, I do this work. I, I, I make stuff for this website because it's something I'm incredibly passionate about. And because when I set out to do it, I wasn't setting out you know, with the goal of having a career. I just was like, this is something that I want to do. Maybe I'll have a shot at it. Um, I want to try my hand at this and see what I can make, see if I can get good at it and see if I can make something that I'm proud of. And I've accomplished that. And I've also had some level of success. Now, some people look at my channel and go, oh my God, especially if you're a small creator, you probably look at my channel and go, oh my God, um, that's a great level of success. But the reality is that it doesn't even translate into that much financial financial success. My show is sustainable at the moment, um, but it's not like I'm bringing in a crazy amount of money. I have said this before. I make less money doing this job all the time for four years with a big following and a fairly loyal following than I did with pretty much any of my previous jobs with the exception of freelance writing, which was, I was pretty low pay, I won't lie. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty tight. And also, that's with me running my own website, demonmama.com, where you can be one of these wonderful chatters and get access to uh, incredible, cute, custom emojis and f nice, colorful names. Um, that's my website. That's with my website. If I was going off of just YouTube income, I would not be able to do this job, this job as a job. It would have to only be a hobby. Uh, the amount of money that I've made from YouTube is not even enough to be close to minimum wage. Over four years, all of it added together over four years would not be minimum wage for one year. You understand? With what I've made off of YouTube alone. Um, so, yeah. The state of, of this website right now is... is not amazing. And the fact that, that now this data uh, is coming to surface, that it's gotten worse and worse for women on this website is really sad and depressing. Um, it's, it's sad for the industry. It's sad for consumers who are missing out on incredible shows that would otherwise exist but don't. Um, and of course, it overall indicates a willingness to basically... Uh, let algorithms make decisions for us completely. The reality is that a lot, a lot of discoverability on YouTube happens through the algorithm. 
for obvious reasons. The YouTube interface is built around its algorithm. The top thing um, when you're on your homepage is, is, your, is recommendations, which are coming through the algorithm. When you search, the top search results are what the algorithm thinks that you want to see. You're not, um, you know, there's not like an organic pipeline for recommendations outside of what I do here. So like when you watch one of my videos and I say, hey guys, go check out Ann Reardon, how to cook that, you, that's a direct organic recommendation. I, a person, am telling you to go do this. But the reality is that that's not really, um, YouTube doesn't really build a lot of tools for us to do that. You know what I mean? The UI is built around the algorithm. It's about feeding you stuff through this algorithm. That's where most YouTube discoverability comes from. And right now, it is telling you, whether you like it or not, you're going to watch men, and pretty much only men, uh, with a ratio of 9 to 1. And that's not even beginning to talk about, like I said, uh, race or, uh, or sexuality. Or the other part of this video, which was the type of content that is succeeding on YouTube, which is largely corporate products. It's pretty rough. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty rough. And it's not a good sign for the health of the environment uh, on this website. And I hope that it can change. But it also does mean that uh, there, there is one thing to consider, which is that it means that if you care about this stuff, that we have to start looking at ways to build recommendations that are outside of the algorithm. We have to learn both as participators, a viewer or a commenter or a chatter, and as video makers like myself, we have to learn how to be able to share people, you know, guide people to content that otherwise wouldn't be seen that's wonderful. You know what I mean? Part of the reason why I spend so much time on my show giving specific recommendations to things that I like or that I find interesting and also the reason why I do react the way, like this the way I do where we watch a video, talk about it, do a discussion afterwards and make sure that we're driving you know, people over to that video is because I want to start changing the way that we approach these things so that everybody doesn't just in instinctually uh, rely on the algorithm. And while I, while I don't think that I personally or my channel or even a couple of different channels are going to stop the algorithm from ruling the recommendations, we can certainly start to change some things. We can create, uh, we can create little bubbles of, of different behavior where people can find fresh and interesting and amazing stuff. And if that catches on to a great enough degree, it might just make it more possible for people who are being ignored by the algorithm to have success. And I would love that personally. I would really love it to be able to see more women in this space, more trans people in this space. Felix B says, that explains why the channels I follow are more diverse. My subs are almost all based on word of mouth. And there you have it, the result is there. If you follow the algorithm, you will be served corporate product and you will be served a very, uh, a, a slice of content that is very lacking in diversity. Retcon 404 says, we would definitely need a creator's union. I would love it if a union was possible, but I think creators have to come up with, are gonna have to start working on coming up with a new type of structure. Because yeah, in the current, in the current paradigm, the fact that YouTube has us all as contractors means that we don't get le the same legal protections as other workers when it comes to union law. But I do think that collective action among content creators is possible. I do believe that's possible. It is yeah. possible to, uh, to sort of shape what the algorithm will recommend you, but it has certain biases by default based on how it's programmed to begin with. Um, and that, is very difficult to fully overcome, but you can of course change that. Um, anyway, uh, there's not a whole lot more for me to say on this topic. It's, it is, 
I can only hope that pe more people will bring attention to this and that we can hopefully change it because uh, it is actually very good for us to have a, a, a website that is able to fairly recommend content and at the very least to not slant it to that degree. Um, it hurts everyone, even the creators at the very top uh, when the when the environment on a website gets to this degree. And it can, in the worst of situations, create a death spiral. If the only thing, like imagine it like this, if the only thing that's being recommended to anyone is Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast might be doing something really amazing and he might be successful and that might be great for him, but it's going to start killing interest in the website. There'll be less overall viewers. Less people will tune in to a website that only serves you one person or one type of person. It's better for everyone for this stuff to be ironed out so that it's not so slanted in what's being recommended. It will encourage more people to pursue this. And if more people can make a living believably and a more diverse group of people can make a living believably on the website, that's going to bring much more vibrant ideas, much more uh, vibrant environment to the website. Anyway, I'm Demon Mama. If you enjoyed what you saw here, make sure you subscribe to my channel down below and leave me a comment. Tell me your thoughts. Have you noticed something similar to this? Has your experience been different? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for hearing the signal.